Hello, we are going to take a look at our third method for solving systems of equations algebraically. La, um, in previous lessons, we talked about the equal values method when you have two equations that are set up as y equals y equals. We talked about the substitution method where we have one equation that is y equals and then we can replace into a second equation. And today we're going to learn the elimination method. We're going to start simple with some basics, and then our next lesson will take us deeper into some more complex problems. Remember our goal with doing systems of equations and solving for x and y is that we are going from a set of two equations with two variables to one equation with one variable. That's a lot more manageable for us, okay? So our content goals remain consistent. We are still going to be working to solve systems of equations. Today we are using the elimination method. We are going to discuss what elimination means and what it looks like. That is our language goal. And then we will work on communicating our process and our method together. Our essential question remains the same. How do we solve for multiple variables using elimination? That remains our essential question for the entirety of this unit. So let's take a look at some examples. First things first, let's review the substitution method. I have one example here that involves the equal values method and another that involves the substitution method. So remember with our equal values method, we have y equals and y equals. So I can set my two parts equal to each other. So I have 3x minus 2 equals negative x plus 6. And I am going to do the same thing on both sides of my equation. And I start by adding x together. I like to get my x's together first though we do have multiple options, of course. Then I will add 2 to both sides, and we get 4x equals 8, divide by 4, and we get x equals 2. I'm going to change colors here. So we know x equals 2. So I use that in this equation. It doesn't matter which one you go back to. So I am going to do y equals 3x minus 2. So 3 times 2 minus 2. y equals 6 minus 2. y equals 4. So that tells me my solution is the ordered pair 2 for x, 4 for y. 2 4 is my answer. Now we can use the substitution method here. We have y equals 2x plus 2, and then we have negative 2x plus 3y equals 10. So what I am going to do is replace my y with the 2x plus 2 equals 10, distribute my 3, so I have negative 2x plus 6x plus 6 equals 10, combine my like terms, negative 2x plus 6x is 4x plus 6 equals 10, I am going to subtract 6 from both sides of my equation, and I get 4x equals 4, divide by 4, and we get x equals 1. Now I am not done. I do need to go back and find the value of y. So if x equals 1, and I know y equals 2x plus 2, Let's do that. Let's use 1 for x, and we get y equals 2 plus 2, y equals 4. So my solution is the ordered pair 
one, four. Okay. And I didn't go back and double check, but it's always a good idea to go back and double check um, in your second equation just to make sure everything works. So here, negative 2 plus 6 is 4, so that works. In my second problem, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, 3 times 4 is 12, negative 2 plus 12 is 10, that does work. So again, always verify your work, okay? But what happens if our problems are not set up with an x equals or a y equals? What if they're both in standard form? Do you remember that from first semester? When we took an equation from standard form and put it into slope-intercept form? Standard form, remember, has all of your variables on one side and your constant on the other. So, for example, negative 2x plus 3y equals 10 is standard form. So, if both equations are in standard form, there's a second process we can, or a third process we can use, and that is called the elimination method. Here is that process. When you have neither of your two equations having x equals nor y equals, and the coefficients of your x terms or your y terms match or can be made to match, then we can add our equations together getting one set of variables to eliminate, that they add to zero. And again, the goal of this method is the same as that of substitution and equal values. Go from two equations with two variables to one equation with one variable. So let's see how this works. Okay, so I've got two examples here we can do together and then um, one that we can that you can try on your own and then one that we can explore a little bit further, okay? So here I have 2x minus y equals negative 2, and I have negative 2x plus 3y equals 10. Now if you notice, neither of these have an x equals or a y equals, but what we do have is a positive 2x and a negative 2x. So I can recall that if I do 2x minus 2x, that is 0. So what I am seeing here is an opportunity to add my equations together. And when I do that, this 2x minus 2x becomes 0. And then negative y is negative 1y plus 3y is 2y, and then negative 2 plus 10 is 8. Now I have the equation 2y equals 8. We have gone from two equations with two variables to one equation with one variable. And it's pretty straightforward. From here now we have just one step to solve for y, and it's okay that we're solving for y first y equals 4. So that tells me in my solution, the y value is 4. This is my answer that I'm getting to. Okay. So now I know y. Let's go find x. And again, it doesn't remember, it doesn't matter which equation you go back to. This one has smaller coefficients. So let's do that, 2x, and I'm going to use 4 for my y, and then I'm going to add 4 to both sides, and we get 2x equals 2, divide by 2, and we get x equals 1. So that's telling me this is 1. Let's verify it in that second equation. So if I check, negative 2 times 1 plus 3 times 4, does that equal 10? 
negative 2 plus 12 equals 10. 10 equals 10. Yeah, it works. OK, so we have verified our solution. This is our solution. All right, let's try another one. So here, negative 5x plus y equals negative 5. 2x minus y equals negative 1. Now here I have a positive y and a negative y. So again, I can see that if I add my equations together, this will eliminate. So I have negative 6 on the right because negative 5 plus negative 1 is negative 6. Negative 5 plus 2x on the left gives me negative 3x. And I am going to divide both sides by negative 3, and x equals positive 2. Now here's the tricky part about the elimination method. On this, on our first one, we solved for y first, and then we solved for x. So you have to really pay attention to your solution that you write it in the correct order, x comma y. Here, I solved for x first, and that's OK. All right, so when I write my solution, I know that my x value is 2. This is going to be my answer up here in the corner. So now let's go back and find the value of y. All right, so I'm going to use the first equation, negative 5x plus y equals negative 5. Negative 5 times 2 plus y equals negative 5. Negative 10 plus y equals negative 5. Add 10 to both sides, and we get y equals 5. OK, I'm going to use my second equation to double check. So 2 times 2 minus 5 equals negative 1, maybe. Is that true? 4 minus 5 does equal negative 1. Excellent. So that is our solution. OK? All right, let's take a look at the fourth one on this page. Um, again, pause the video here if you need to complete your notes and take a look. And let's clear this out. I want to look at number four because number four is a slightly different scenario. And just a question I want to ask you to give us some forward thinking into our lesson for tomorrow and Monday. So we have x minus 4y equals negative 25, and 12x minus 4y equals 52. What do you notice? We have negative 4y and negative 4y. They're not opposite signs. So if I add those together, they won't eliminate. So here's the question I want you to ask and see if you can come up with a strategy. What if the signs match? What if nothing cancels? Or eliminates? Be thinking about that as we move into our next lesson. All right.